Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about a certain Kickstarter NAS, the Storax. But before we go any further, a little bit of background. For the last month, maybe a month and a half, quite a lot of you have been messaging me and Eddie at NAS Compares about a particular little Kickstarter that is really buzzing to the surface. It's appeared on a lot of editorial platforms and... You know, when it comes to network attached storage, it seems to be the very definition of too good to be true. Now, normally I would have put this kind of subject, this kind of thing, into a date and user a week video. I've covered a few kind of Raspberry Pi based Kickstarter NASs there in the past that were trying to meld a lot of the open source stuff out there into much more affordable package. But this seems to be one of the more aggressive moves not only in terms of value for money but also in terms of what the thing is promising and enough of you have been in contact you know up to this point i thought it was important enough for you know me and eddie to delve into this and give our genuine thoughts and feelings on this because i'll get it out of the way straight away i'm not a big fan of kickstarter nas solutions like this not because of the idea of kickstarter i'm not anti that at all i think crowdfunding is very very important but when it comes to devices like this on Kickstarter, which are very easy to build for a lot of even lightly versed IT guys with the likes of AliExpress knocking around on eBay, building your own PC and converting it alongside a lot of motherboards as we saw in our build your own NAS versus NAS branded uh, solutions out there, a video we did about a week and a half, two weeks ago. This kind of solution is actually quite attainable and it comes down to you buying a pre-built turnkey solution. And this seems to be a turnkey solution with open source software. Not, you know, we've seen that before. So I have mixed feelings about it and this video along with Eddie's mixed feelings as well is something we're going to delve into. But uh, what we're going to do is hop over to the laptop, we're going to research everything we know about uh, uh, um, the Storaxa right now, everything on their page up to date right now. Uh, I believe it's the, uh, what is it, the 6th of February. We're going to go through the pages, the, you know, the status quo as it is, the good and the bad, the pros and cons about that campaign then. And then we're going to switch over to a Zoom call with Eddie where we're going to exchange our thoughts and feelings on this. So let's Let's crack on with the screen here and have a little look at everything we know so far about this particular NAS Kickstarter. Okay, so here it is, the Storax there. Now, before we get out of the way, let's talk about those specs. This is the thing that a lot of you have been drawn in by quite a lot. It is, I'm going by my notes here, it's got five SATA bays there. So again, you're talking 2022 TB, your four M2 NVMe slots. It's got Wi-Fi 6, it's got four 2.5 GB e ports. It's got an SD card reader. It's got four USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports. That's 10 gigabits per second external connectivity. It's open source um, with the device arriving with OpenWR for the kind of router side of things that wireless capability and at the same time you've got true nas there for the nas side for your storage management and more so straight away that is again quite a banging amount of hardware but uh, hardware and software support but the first thing that really sets the alarm bells off is this it's the idea that the pledge goal was originally four grand 4100 there on that pledge goal and if you look at the individual rewards there some of the early ones have already gone but even some of their initial ones, if we scroll down to the bottom, where we can see the um, some of the ones that are available early doors, some of the ones that have already gone, in fact, the early bird one, again, was 45% off at $219, originally $399. Think about all of that hardware I just described to you. I haven't even got into the subject of the processor there, which on the uh, original plans, keyword original there, was an Intel processor there, a 6000 series processor. Now, fair play to them, there is detailed layouts there of all of the hardware and components, but uh, you know, a lot of the information I'm going to talk about today, most of it is my own uh, input there, but I'd be denying it if I said there wasn't already a, a significant body of information on the likes of Reddit, where lots of people are debating this back and forth. Too good to be true, clearly being the key point here and probably one of the best ones again i'll link to this below this is uh soren abraham here uh too good to be true his post here uh followed by uh the respective reply of uh, o n d o o n o um goes into a lot of those red flags so again most of these you will pick up yourself in the first few minutes of looking at this but there are some extra ones there to do with you know the hardware design and also hardware costing due to you know the shortages at the moment indeed the motherboard that is linked to on there with that very same cpu 
that cost, even if you go to AliExpress now, this is a motherboard that's got those sodium slots there. It's got those network ports there. It's kind of not dissimilar to what we're seeing here. It's got those USB ports. And when you look at the customization of it and you look at that layout, there's you know a degree of similarity there. Again, we're going to try to remain as impartial as possible. We're not just going to dogpile here. But there is that immediate question that will occur to you is how on earth is this amount of hardware going to be supplied en masse? And particularly when you saw that this pledge goal of 4,100, which is an incredibly low goal there, that's the goal they have to hit, hit for this device to get automatic, uh, uh, well, not automatic completion, but at the end for them, after the amount of days that are issued to a Kickstarter campaign there, when that is concluded, as long as the campaign isn't cancelled in advance or taken down, you know, depending on the layering of the goals and the share there, they can keep that money. So it's a very low number, which when you scroll down to a lot of the hardware and the architecture, and they talk about a lot of the people involved, this is not like a one-person campaign. They've already detailed a number of the people that are part of this team on this campaign, you know, from the designers to the kind of software uh, tweaking there on the background and even the logistics. There's still quite a lot uh, there in the background. You need... There's just there's something that's not uh, adding up there on that system. Now, I mentioned the hardware because, again, they do go into a relative amount of detail about that hardware there. You talk about, um, you know, kind of uh, the Wi-Fi uh, ad adapters and stuff like that that's going to be on it, not just the network adapters as well. On top of that, that CPU, the N6000, which, you know, straight off the bat, it does have just about the right lane capacity for this layer, as you saw from that pre-built mobile on AliExpress there. But at the same time, it's how much that architecture is going to be stretched. For example, I'm not seeing immediately here, what, what is the lanes afforded to those NVMe slots? Because you've got the NVMe's and you've got four of them running off in it, that Intel N6000 CPU. I don't see those lanes being three times four they are probably going to be three one uh maybe three two at a push but i really don't see that with that amount of storage connectivity there also it's worth highlighting you may have noticed when i was scrolling by um that not only have we started seeing uh the initial uh tiers and the pledges go but they've now started rolling out alternatives so for example when they're seeing these benchmarks getting added on here we can see at the different back levels that other things are planned and they've already started rolling out these alternative architecture models here which again bills are going off because one we've still not seen the original unit reach production yet we've seen a few uh kind of demo units and i'll look at those videos later on you've got to be careful showing videos on youtube of course because sometimes it can you know down the line if you show a video within youtube it can raise a copyright claim by any company out there so i'm gonna have to be a bit careful on that one but it's the idea that we're already seeing alternative builds here being rolled out now one people are going to ask that some people will ask about external 10 gpu they'll be asking about perhaps a more powerful cpu there and there are amd options being discussed on there but it's it's the idea of all these little extra bolt ones being rolled out um right now before we've seen that original pitch arguably reach full reveal there on screen um now the timeline there is detailed through and as you can see fulfillment to be completed by may june 2023 it's february right now that is not very far away i'd like to see a lot more footage at factor 11 i appreciate that they're going to need the backing money here to sink into production which is totally fair this is crowdsourcing you know They've made it abundantly clear by going into crowdsourcing they do not have that finance to start with. That's the whole point. I get that. But I would have liked to have seen a little bit more than images of True NAS here and OpenWRT, things that are freely available online. And when we do go down to like the CAD images there, again, people can just get CAD. And the build of a chassis, you can build a chassis. But it's little things like the video here. This top video is just drives being slid into an external casing. That's not groundbreaking to me. When I see the performance measurements, and again, I'm not going to play these videos, but you can check them out on the link to this Kickstarter. 
I don't like, it's really silly, and maybe you're being overly paranoid, I don't like that I can't see that cable connected there, and if you are watching this uh, chat at Storaxa, I'm trying to remain as, you know, with an open mind as much as possible, so if you could update those videos, showing me a little bit more connectivity, perhaps um, the OS on that system, registering that device popping up with physical on screen, if you're going to go off camera, show me really off camera connectivity there, and just ultimately going through it, I just keep coming back time and time again to this is a very ambitious project that I think has been lowballed. And I think when you look at the cost of each of the um, uh, the tiers there for the pledges, those numbers just seem slightly unrealistic compared to what they are trying to deliver here. You know, yes, one might argue they aren't, you know, they aren't Synology QNAP, Acer Store, hell, they're not even Anchor and, you know, uh, um, you know, other brands out there that have been pursuing network attached storage all this time, uh, Amber, I should say. But at the same time, if they know enough about these storage systems that they're going open source, you know, now we're talking about hardware availability and production. And right now, with hardware shortages being as abundant as they are, and to their credit, they do discuss this in the comments when this has been raised by potential and current backers. I would still highlight that this level of production without any kind of firm commitments or at least provisional agreements in place, when you know you've got that much backing happening in four to five days, it just alarm bells are going off for me there. So again, I have reached out to Starxter themselves already. That was two or three, it was that Friday evening, so that was now two, two and a half days ago, and I'm still waiting to get a response from them about maybe a discussion with them directly. I'm still waiting for a, a reply, but that was the weekend, so we're not going to uh, go into them too much on that one. But just go through the comments then. You do see the odd message of discontent about how they're going to um, fulfill orders like this. Now, that is a lot of comments, 1,686, and at the same time, fair play to them, they've been responded. But anyone that's ever watched Slope's Game Room Kick Scammer will know that generally you find that communication is tippity toppity, you know, during this stage of any Kickstarter there. So, again, just because people are replying a great deal, doesn't necessarily immediately mean that that is always going to be wholly positive. Let's, again, if you don't have to back this now. Yes, it may roll out and it might cost you $200 more, but better is going to cost you $200 than you lose two to three to four to $500 in an unknown. But for now, what we're going to do is head over to Zoom. We've got Eddie on the Zoom and we're going to start going through what he thinks of this and what we think are kind of, if not the red lights, then maybe even the green lights for some users there. Let's head over to the Zoom and start the discussion. Okay, and here we are with Eddie. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about the Storaxa, the good, the bad, and the ugly. I mean, for you, what are your first instincts about this Kickstarter, Eddie? When I first saw the title, I was thinking, oh, wow, that's a, that's a quite a clickbaity subject. And then I clicked because the title said over 100 terabytes home cloud storage with remote uh, access. Which is quite promising because this is what people have been looking for for a long time. Mm -hmm. Turnkey situ uh, solution. So this looks like a com small NAS that you could put into your desktop and uh, just plug and play and, and everything will be sorted. And this is what they are trying to sell on their uh, page, on their intro, on their elevator speech, where they say that this three step solution, you just uh, plug it in, put the drives in and uh, uh, create your username and, and connect to the world. And when you scroll down and dig deeper, then you realize that is not a turnkey solution. All it is, they are selling a box with the open source um, uh, OS, which is um, um, it's, uh, I believe it's Trina, Trina, it's Scale, Trina's, Trina's and, and, and Open WRT open for the WRT. root side, yeah. Yes. And then you realize that if you have set these things up yourself, this is not one, two, three step. <laughs> Even if this OS is pre-installed, you still need to do things like creating volumes, RAID, and if you make a title home user made for home, nobody knows what is RAID, what is volume, how to set these things up, uh, what, and also remote access, that means punching holes in, in, in your firewall, accessing outside your home, so there are security risks are included. And you can't sell a solution like that for home. I can understand mm -hmm. this is something for business, some, something some, for someone who wants to reduce the costs of their storage devices, so this could be an option. But you need to have IT knowledge to a good degree to set this thing up and make it secure. So this is not 
uh, a, a solution for home user definitely not i think um again i should mention prior to this call I sort of uh, done some screen recording there, sort of showing the page off. I think there's five days left on the on the Kickstarter itself before it closes, and then from there they then receive those funds, which they can then use towards its investment. I should highlight, we're not just dogpiling on this solution, but we're trying to explain why we would not personally invest on this based on what we're seeing, and moreover why there are those inherent red flags. I mean, Eddie was talking about that there, this whole idea of a turnkey solution. And lots of users are looking at Synology and QNAP and all of that and going, it's incredibly expensive for the hardware. I could build it myself. This isn't a solution for those people who can build it themselves. Because the people that can build it themselves, you know, let's bring it up on the share screen there. Let's bring it up there where da 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 Because we've been looking into it a little bit more. And Ed kind of raised something else as well with me about the company itself behind it uh, and uh, according to the kickstarter there the company uh, is their te uh, their technology technology company arrow track based in um, again i'm not going to pronounce that because i will get it wrong um, but the more you look up about this company the less convincing it seems that they exist let's get rid of that share bar at the top even when you google the company themselves you're just getting more articles about their kickstarter it's not actually the company indeed the only company listing i found wasn't even them it was a company based in um in canada so i don't that's not really convincing it for me another thing i didn't really talk about earlier on in the video is it seems to be trying very hard um, to push this whole idea, as you say, of a, a sense of ease. We're not going to watch the videos, as mentioned earlier in the video, but it's it's pushing a convenience angle, which in some, time, some cases I don't think it's possible to fill. Take, for example, this we're seeing here on screen. You're about to see it, and it mentions 2,000 PS5 video games at 50 gig per game for that storage level. You can't store PS5 games on a server. You just can't. They can only be stored inside the system. So why include that? They, they surely must know that. And to me, that's already another little ding -a -ling, -ling, ling bell there in the background. And with the installation yeah, exactly. there, the installation guide, as Eddie rightly points out there, it says uh, pop in the SSDs. I mentioned earlier on, Eddie, I should highlight as well, that the architecture that the, the initial pitch was built, built on with the uh, N6000 CPU, yes, it's a PCIe Gen 3 CPU there. And it's got a decent little clock speed there. I think it goes up to 3.1 or 3.3 gigahertz. But for four M2 NVMe slots, they're going to be PCI Gen 3 times 1 or 3 times 2 at best. I can't find that anywhere on this Kickstarter. Yeah, they did detailed. confirm it. It's okay. actually 800 I megabytes per second. Okay, X1 I apologize. Speed. So that's X1 speed. It's like less than 1,000 1, megabytes a second. So mm. it's, you're not going to even get full speeds of NVMe's. So be aware, but we come back to that slide also about talking about design. Mm. Uh, this verse one, this rate. They say uh, because I watched a video on this. They, they were asked what sort of uh, challenges you had to go through already, and he said like, uh, we had to uh, put all this hardware into this tiny um, box, well, and then we we were uh, having issues with heating, and he said like we resolved that problem by adding fans at the back, and I was thinking like, wow. Bravo. <laughs> That's mm. good that you, you added those fans. But the other thing is, I want to see some sort of um, uh, experiment, some sort of like a research, how the airflow goes through your mm. case. And if you scroll back up there, okay. there is no there is no airflow going through this NAS. Okay, it's, it's metal based, which is good. So it can dis dissipate, dis dissipate some sort yeah. of heat from the NAS. But when you think about airflow itself, there's only a tiny went on the side, that a bit higher up, mm. the previous picture when you see, so, see, that's the only wind you have there. So you need to think about where the air is going to be sucked in and where it's going to be blown out. So I, I presume those fans are outwards um, of mm. the so There's nowhere. And <laughs> that uh, outgoing air sort of vents, as you see, they're bigger than the incoming. So it's, it's, there's no chance it's going to be venting properly. Another I mean, thing is just because it's made out of metal, it means that hard drives put in there, especially high capacity hard drives, is going to generate massive noise. And this NAS is, is designed to be placed on your desktop next to your mm -hmm. um, monitor. And the noise is going to be generated, it's going to be crazy. And also the heat dissipation from NVMEs is placed on the top. There is no cooler, nothing like that 
all it does is it closes up with a metal <laughs> metal squarey uh, cover. And mm. so they say that's going to dissipate this um, heat, but it won't. I saw some areas of heat dissipating panel on there. And again, the layout of the mobile I mentioned earlier on is not dissimilar to one that we've already seen there listed on AliExpress. But you're right, the, there just seems to be little tiny gaps. Now, we have to at least, you know, give them the benefit of the doubt that this is a campaign to sell a product. So there's a limit to how technical things can go. And again, when you go into the comment section, which you will in a moment, there are a lot of questions being answered by them where they are being asked directly a lot of the questions that we've said and they are either providing answers or researching the answers within their individual team which is great but just because they're answering these questions now it's not the same as when the money lands in the bank and I think it, a lot of people might look at this and go it's two three hundred dollars I'm prepared to take that risk I might be able to get that money back but you know once a thousand people do that that is a lot of wonga um, with a lot of incentive but for this scale, this number of backers, with no proven history of output and production, that to me is probably the loudest alarm bell here. It is a relatively small team providing a solution that technically is greater than nearly all of the other SMB4 5 base that we've ever talked about here on the channel. It doesn't mean it's not possible. It just means that it's a very difficult to mass produce it in something like this with no back-end experience to point at. And I wish there was a, a louder, more so than anything, a louder uh, presentation of their experience, you know? Because it is referred to in those questions, as mentioned earlier on, but it's not for me, it's not front and centre, which prob is problematic for me. And I mentioned to this earlier on as well, and I can't really play these videos because you never know down the line if we're going to get flagged. Um... But when you look at the performance benchmarks, we've got the screen here, we've got the device, but I don't like that. I can't see how these are connected. It's an incredibly silly, small complaint, but I don't like that in these presentation videos, I can't see it connected. And it's a, you know, a little tiny thing there. And when we go down to the, obviously they've had to do a projected budget report there, and it just seems these numbers don't iron out as far as I'm concerned when you look at larger scale. Yes, it's a custom build. Yes, technically they're not having to you know, reinvent the wheel when it comes to software. They don't need to build their own OS because they're uh, provisioning other OSs. Again, it sounds like it arrived with Tunas Core on board. Again, 16 gig minimum if you want those services and you presumably can upgrade away from that. But to my understanding, the official partner of Tunas has always been IX Systems. And I'm not seeing TrueNAS talk particularly loud about this, you know? And if there was you know, kind of an agreed partnership, yes, it's open source, but it's still their IP, so to speak. I'm not hearing a great deal from them on this. I'm just going to quit from this um, share screen there. Which I think for me is probably the biggest tell for me. There seems to be a lot of um, gaps that are just papered over with stuff, you know? Stuff yeah, exactly. They're just a bunch of guys... Um trying to create something new but i still don't understand what are they actually selling because it's not software they are not creating their own software by by look of it they're not even creating their own hardware they're just putting everything into their mm. case so <laughs> by looks of it they're just creating a new case mm. so because motherboards i can find on aliexpress <laughs> there's nothing that i don't think so there will be manufacturers creating mm. dedicated motherboard for them I want to drill down a little bit onto that issue of price, though, Ed, because right now, looking at that, you mentioned earlier on about, uh, you know, they could just market a case on its own. With this, they could have just sold that case because the case is probably one of the most unique things about this. Indeed, the only unique thing about it that I'm seeing, but they seem to be promoting an entire system, an entire platform full of gaps there for me i mean what's your what's your perspective when it comes to the pricing here because th they were actually breaking down the costs and it comes very close to this uh, 200 two hundred dollar mark or it's 50 170 so the profit they make is not enough to cover things like uh, warranties so uh, uh, support because they'll need to consider support all the logistics when there's something broken they'll need to be sent back and RMA uh, issue and things like that and the shipping things forwards and backwards to China as well is, is just infeasible 
they're saying they include the VAT already, but it's not just VAT, it's also import fees. Mm. When you send it to America, UK or anywhere else, anywhere else, you still need to add another 20, 30, maybe sometimes even 40% on Region that import yeah. fees. So the profit margin they make is so tiny that they will realize themselves that they can't fulfill this project. So they'll just call it a day and they say like, okay, we, <laughs> we paid ourselves 100, 200,000 uh, so a year salary by doing this, trying to make this work and it didn't work. Hmm. So it will, it will not look like they stole the money, but they'll, <laughs> they'll just uh, use that money in, in the ways that um, it just proves that it didn't work. And uh, they, they call it a day and they'll just keep it in one way. It's, it's, it can't work. This is I mean, impossible. again, I, I th I'm trying to keep an open mind about it. I really am. But it's just, as you say, the price point there is what I find very, very difficult to swallow. Again, I'm, you know, in an ideal world, everyone that's backed it, a year from now, a video will come out because their prospected um, rollout date is this summer which seems, you know, frighteningly optimistic based on what we're seeing there. And, you know, hopefully I'll be proven wrong. You know, we'll end up buying one and doing a review on the channel. I'll have to eat some serious humble pie. But, you know, all my spider senses are tingling on this one. You know, I'm not, I'm not feeling it. I mean, again, something we sort of talked about when the first few people messaged us about this device was TerraMaster, of course. And with TerraMaster... TerraMaster, one of the brands we cover, and they've always been kind of the value hardware tier. And a lot of people, when they buy TerraMaster NAS, and it's got their own OS on board, TOS, TOS 5, or whatever, it's not, you know, it's not, you know, going to beat down DSM any day now. But when you buy one of those solutions, you do get the distinction that 70, 80% of that is the hardware you're paying for there. And they, they're a China based company, a lot of the RMAs, they've got some UK distributed stock there. But they are probably the lowest price NAS I've seen in the market that include an OS. And yes, this Kickstarter here isn't strictly including an OS. That's a lot of that development out the way. But still, those price points we're seeing for this, I think, again, 269, 369 there. I know the first tier is gone. It just, I, we just keep coming back to that unrealistic price point. But I think, again, we're, we're, we're at risk now of just hammering continuous nails into coffins. Nice and simple. What's your last word on it, Ed? Yes, this sounds like an exciting sort of project, but I would recommend getting something like TerraMaster or maybe Asus Store. TerraMaster is on the cheap end, as we mentioned, and you can install your true NAS on it and you can just run your open source software that mm. way and you'll have your warranty and support in your local country is much easier and so, also if you do use the other os which is uh, actually custom built for that nas like TerraMaster tos5 you'll get few additional things like drive mixing different drop capacity drive mixing and, and, and um mm. dropbox alternatives and other things the, the functionality you get with that nas is, is is much better than this which is not even confirmed it's going to go ahead and not going to collapse somewhere halfway through development. Hmm. I mean, we've covered a few uh, on Data News of the Week, uh, a few different Raspberry Pi based NAS systems there. And again, just like you mentioned earlier on, it's always come down to the case more than the device. That always seems to be quite strange that the a lot of these products are kind of trading on the strength of their case. But do you know what? Let's conclude. I'm going to head back into the studio now and summarize everything we talked about today, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Thanks for the Zoom call, man. Let's get back to that studio. So what do we think? Well, frankly, I'm not wholly convinced at this time. I think this is clearly a solution that's either one of two things in the best and worst case scenarios. In the best case scenario, it is a solution that is being sold either at a loss or at least being sold as a brand building exercise. I think Storaxa probably has designs on being a lot bigger than they are and arguably they're going at it way too quick, at least in my opinion, to become a bigger brand utilizing this as a kind of PR exercise, if you will, to build up that uh, portfolio. On the letter side, worst case scenario, I don't think they're going to be able to provide the solutions they can in the scale that it seems to be based on this campaign. It just seems too early a modest campaign to be exploded outwards too quickly and to have provided that many different 
uh, alternative plans for follow-up uh, and second gen if you will um architecture and specs of this device we've still not even seen you know an out there real life version of the first uh, prototype there yes there's those videos there but there's a, a few little gaps there cables not showing on screen that sort of stuff for me to think that this is a project that is a you know at best very optimistic and idealistic and at worst definitely worth sitting on a fence on and actually seeing the first generation land if you have already invested in this project you know everyone you know you make your own choices in life and hopefully everything i've said can be proven wrong but for me there's not enough here for to make me think i want to back this project i think such a solution can be built for this money whether it can be built on that scale with profit, distribution, support, warranty and more, all of that factored in together in the way this campaign seemingly wants to promote, that is a different story entirely. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below, because maybe you disagree with me, maybe you have already discussed this with them, maybe later on, a year, year and a half from now, they may be mainstream, I'll buy one and I'll have to eat my own words in a review, we'll have to wait and see. But for now, for me personally, I would sit on the fence on this one until we see a few more units out there in the world. With the uh, conclusion of this campaign in just a handful of days, and they're arguing that, you know, realistic um, first deliveries, or at least first reveals, is going to be by summer of this year. I would sit on the fence at least until then and see what happens, because right now, I'm not wholly convinced by what I'm seeing here. Let me know what you think. All the links to all of the stuff I talked about today, indeed those uh, Reddit articles that I referenced there as well, they should be linked in the description. So there's a great growing community of discussion back and forth there, pros and cons to check out. Other than that, thank you so much for watching. Thanks again for Eddie for joining us, of course, here on NAS Compares. Me and Eddie run this joint, and hopefully you guys enjoy what we do, and hopefully this video has helped you in some way. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.